Okay, trying to bike test again. We made the uh, on our cell phone. We made the uh, mount for the uh, camera directly to the handlebars without going through an extra uh, mounting, uh, whatever they call those things you mount to the handlebar that gives you an extra mounting point for your devices. Anyway, it was pretty shaky, so hoping this will help. Yeah, it looks pretty stable, much as I can tell by the monitor here on the bike. Just a cell phone. Colors look good. Focus, as much as I could tell, looks good. Bumps. That's hard to tell, because I'm bumping. We got, uh, I don't know, 16 miles, 70 mile an hour here. A little bit of wind noise, I'm sure. I've got the mic set to 100 on level. Before I had it at uh, 70. And I just want to see how much wind noise it does pick up. I figured I'd go out to this road here so we get to see a little more of the mountains and stuff. Plus we're shooting into the uh, shooting more into the sun here. Twenty three miles an hour now. Twenty-four. I'm going to turn here. There's a little path here that goes out to, uh, I forget the name of the lake. Twenty two miles an hour. Get over there to the right. Camera wants to drift instead of staying centered. Kind of likes to kind of go do its own thing. It seems like when you turn a corner, it doesn't return 100%. Okay, we're going to go in here. Not going into the lake, but just to look around a little bit and uh, get down a bumpy road. 
If you didn't tell, that's a bumpy road. They change this thing a lot. It's actually uh, closed now. I guess the water table is so low, they close it. Try the uh, on-screen can camera movements here. That was kind of a fast movement. I'm creeping it back. Kind of a slow pan. I'm doing this by uh, finger movements on the screen, holding the, uh, my finger on the screen and just moving my finger. And the, the camera moves in the direction you got your finger. I'll go uh, up a little bit. Still panning to the left, but I'm going up too. I'll keep panning to the left, but I'll start going down a little bit. Now I'll level it out. And I'll do a little telephoto. It's a set zoom in rate. And really, you don't want to go past one. If you go to two, then you're in a digital. And, uh, Digital is not so great. I might be in digital already because it's kind of jumping. I can't tell by the screen. It's supposed to tell you when it goes into digital. Otherwise, you want to stay in optical. Now, this uh, has been focused. It should be all in uh, focus other than if there's some really close stuff to me, like maybe these, this sign, I'm gonna go across the sign, it probably will come out of focus. To go down a bit for it. Right there. Actually, when, when the thing moves across it, it should actually uh, focus right on that sign. I'm shooting straight into the sun, so that's the reason it's so dark. All right, I'm going to get out of here, put this back on zero, uh, full wide angle. I tend to forget that wide angle. I'm riding a bike and zoomed in and that ain't so good. Center it. Now everything's neutral. These are uh, one inch to three or four inch deep bumps, each one of these bumps on this dirt road. That's, that would be a Jim Dandy test. If that's anything close to stable, I've done a good job. All right, just got done doing a uh, test of the video system set up on this bike. It's running right now, actually. Um, Osmo Plus. Um, using uh, pretty much all Osmo parts except for the uh, RC, RC uh, race car shock I substituted for the spring that they were using in there. I don't think it made a difference, but it uh, looks nice. I'm um, going to edit the video. I'll probably stick all this together once we get it going uh, to see how it all looks. Um, I'm shooting the hand work with a GoPro um, 3 Black. It's a nice camera, but it doesn't compare to the Osmo. 
um, in their venues. There's a lot of stuff that Osmo would never do. This GoPro can, and the stabilization and uh, fast gun, run and gun type shooting you can do with the Osmo, the, the GoPro really can't contend with this. It just does a better job. But I'm new to the uh, Osmo yet, so and I'm, I'm not a great avid shooter. I don't shoot like every day. So I'm, uh, I'm relearning as fast as I'm learning probably. All right, well, I just want to show that. Uh, let me get on this side over here. This uh, Z-axis stabilizer is really neat. It, uh, every little bump, you can see that thing going up and down. And if you, if you'd notice a camera, um, it's, it's actually uh, micro adjusting. It's focal point, it's twisting and turning a little bit. Watch here, see? Well, it's doing that same thing up and down when I move this up and down. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but... Because uh, the pitch on the lens should be almost level always. Well, you can see, look at the back of the camera, how it's changing. Anyway, it does a really good job on uh, bumps. Even better than the camera by itself, and that's, that does a really good job. I'm just fine-tuning, and I had to readjust. Uh, I had to mount this, the mount directly to the handlebar, the, go, the uh, DJI uh, bike mount, because I had it mounted on, uh, I had it mounted on one of these, uh, that mount to the handlebar, but they're, even though they're good, there's a little bit of flex to them. And uh, every little bit of movement has to be contended with some way or another. So trying to isolate everything to just the, uh, the actual movements caused by the bike ride and not by things vibrating. And then try to dampen and adjust and do what I can to get those working right. So uh, to neutralize them as best as possible. Anyway. I'm going to edit this down. I think I talked too much already.